shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in all wonder. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. Good morning, everybody. We are glad that you're joining us here in these moments for worship with Memorial United Methodist Church here in Fernandina Beach, Florida. My name is Charlie. I'm the senior pastor of the church here. And like I said, we are glad that you have joined us for this service of worship to spend these holy and sacred moments together. Whether you are joining us live on Facebook, whether you are joining us later in the day or the week via YouTube, or whether you have received this service as one of our MacPack DVD uh, services, we are glad that you're here. We hope that in these moments that you get to encounter God through the power of the Holy Spirit. We want you to know today that you can get everything that you need to participate in our worship service by going to our website. That's mumconline.com forward slash connect. And there you will find all the various bits and pieces that you will need to help you participate fully in this service. You'll also find there some links that will help you if you want to give a gift to the work of Memorial this morning. And you'll also find there our online registration form. And it will really help us if you will link on that, uh, click on that link, uh, go to that Google form and fill out your details there. We would love for you to do that today. Let us know that you were here with us. 
We also ask that you take a moment to share some of your prayer concerns in our live community feed. You can do that by typing those in as a part of the chat there, and we would love for you to do that. We will pray for you in real time. We will lift up those prayer requests later on in the service, of course, also. And if you look on your screen for that little share button, and if you will click that button right now and and share that on your timeline, you don't know which of your friends will join us for worship in this way this Sunday morning. We do have a number of announcements to go through with you today. The first is to remind you that we are now offering three very different services every Sunday morning. We continue to have backyard worship that's outdoors at 8 a.m. We have a 9.15 service meeting in Maxwell Hall indoors in person. All with social distancing in place, we invite all of our worshipers to wear masks at those services as well. And then we will continue to have our 11 o'clock Facebook Live service. So we're hopeful that we're offering ways in which all of us can engage in some way with worship week by week. We do want to say to you that this Wednesday night, we continue with our drive-through dinner program. It has been a real success over the last number of weeks. We've actually sold out of food a couple of times in recent weeks. So if you would like your dinner on Wednesday night, the best way to reserve that is to go along to our website, mumconline.com forward slash connect, and you can find there the link to sign up and reserve a dinner for Wednesday night. If you don't work well on the internet, you can, of course, call the office tomorrow and speak to Grace. Dinners are $8 each. They can be picked up between 5 and 6 p.m. at the 6th Street entrance to Maxwell Hall. And then we invite you to take your dinner home, settle yourself down, and get yourself onto a screen for one of our Zoom classes. We have a number of classes running at the minute. They are all excellent and all open so that you can jump in on them at any time. So we would love for you to be a part of that. You can find out the details for those classes by going along to that same Connect web page. One other thing that I want to remind you of is a very special date coming up in our calendar. That's November 29th. It's special because on that Sunday, we will hopefully move our backyard worship service at 8 a.m. back into the sanctuary here on that day. But that night, we are going to host our second drive-through event between 5 and 7 p.m., We think that we are all in the mood to find something to celebrate, and so we're going to use that date to kick off Christmas and to start celebrating that appropriately. So come along that night, plan to drive through between 5 and 7 p.m. We will have some stations for you to stop at. You'll be able to receive Holy Communion. There'll be some live Christmas music. We've got some special gifts and some special lights all along the way. You will not want to miss that. And also, that is the night whenever you will get to pick up your Christmas poinsettias. And if you want to uh, assure that you have one of those, please go along to our Connect webpage where you can order that there. We know that it's earlier in, this, in the year than normal, but we've got to do it this way because of the situation that we are facing with COVID. So please go along, order your poinsettia, and plan to pick it up that night. Finally, of course, today and this week on Wednesday, we will all mark Veterans Day. And so I wanted to take a moment just to note our veterans and to honor them. If you were in church together this Sunday morning, I would ask for our veterans to stand in this moment. Instead, because we are online for this service, I'm going to ask you if you have a veteran in your household, if you'll just take a second now to honor them and to thank them for their service. And as you do that, I'll also invite you to bow your heads with me as I lead us now in a prayer for our veterans. Governor of nations, our strength and shield, we give you thanks for the devotion and courage of all of those who have offered military service for this country, for those who have fought for freedom, for those who lay down their lives for others, for those who have borne suffering of mind or of body, for those who have brought their best gifts to times of need. On our behalf, they have entered into danger, endured separation from those they love, labored long hours, and borne hardship in war and in peacetime. Lift up by your mighty presence those who are now at war. Encourage and heal those in hospitals or mending their wounds at home. 
guard those in any need or trouble. Hold safely in your hands all military families. And bring the returning troops to joyful reunion and tranquil life at home. Give to us, your people, grateful hearts and a united will to honor these men and women and to hold them always in our love and in our prayers until your world is perfected in peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Pastor Carrie. Oh, the missions video, not Pastor Carrie, me still. This is the second Sunday of the month, and traditionally we would have a mission moment in our service. We're going to run that by video today, and so Pastor Drew is going to introduce that on the video. Hi, this is Pastor Drew with your November missions highlight. This month, the Thanksgiving coming up, we all start to focus on food. The Memorial is a church that loves to eat. We enjoy a good potluck or getting together with our small group for a dinner. And so it makes sense that feeding people would feature prominently in our missions program. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus broke bread with everybody, with the poor, the rich, with sinners and religious leaders. Jesus' table was always open to anyone and everyone who wanted to join. And that's what our missions program seeks to do as well. Gracie's Kitchen and the Interfaith Dinner Network both provide hot dinners to the homeless and working poor in our communities. These missions not only feed their stomachs, but they also feed their souls by building relationships with them and serving extra helpings of grace and dignity with each meal. Take a listen to some of my conversations with each of our mission partners. So let's talk a little bit about Gracie's Kitchen. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, what your work is and uh, why you guys have been doing it? Our work is to feed the hungry and nourish their spirit. That's actually our mission statement. Mm -hmm. And um, we are, you know, it's 10 years this month that we are in business. And we are a soup kitchen in the heart of Yulee, Florida. And we feed the homeless, the working poor, single families with children, um, children, you know, older children that are out on the streets come in and um, senior, lots of senior citizens. Um, anybody who wants a meal can come and have a meal with us. There's no credentials that they have to show. Um, everybody is welcome. Well, the IDN stands for Interfaith Dinner Network, and that represents the fact that this is an organization that's made up of a coalition of different churches here in the local area that get together and serve food to people who need it four nights a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. It was, it was founded about 10 years ago, and members of Memorial were some of the founding members. It's held at the Salvation Army Hope House, which is at the corner of 9th and Date Streets here in Fernandina Beach. And we coordinate with our churches and a couple of the other churches Wednesday night dinners to make sure that on that Wednesday night, when we're not serving, the guests that would normally come to us have another place to go. So on Wednesdays, we would see um, people attending the Wednesday night dinners and also participating in the sandwich ministry that we hold on Wednesdays. As you heard Cheryl say, our church's sharing meal program and sandwich ministry help to fill an important gap in our community so that the hungry in Fernandina Beach know they always have a hot meal available. Through opening our church's Wednesday night dinners and continuing that through the sandwich ministry, we modeled Jesus' incredible hospitality to anyone and everyone and allowed them to be a part of our grace-filled family. Each of these missions serve over a thousand people every week and your donations to our general missions fund help to provide the food that our volunteers prepare each time they serve. And so if you are interested in serving with one of these missions or learning more about what they do, please give me a call and I would love to get you connected. Thank you so much for your generosity and support of our mission partners as we seek to reach out into our community and be a part of God's transformation of the world. Thank you. What amazing ministries we do have that feed the people in our communities. Um, let us welcome our light of Christ together in here in our space and in your homes. We invite you to light a candle. Welcome, light of Christ. And as we have welcomed Christ into our midst, we ask that you share the peace of Christ 
on our live community feed and with the people in your home or send a text message. Peace of Christ be with you all. And as Christ is with us, we will join together in our call to worship. The words will be on your screen or on your, in your Connect guide. Let us open our minds to God's teaching. And tune our ear to God's word. Let us listen to the faith, to the stories of faith of our ancestors. And share our stories with our children. We put our trust in God. We worship the one who gives us life. And let us join now singing together with Jean and Joey. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh 
Thank you so much to Jeannie and Joey for always leading us so well in our musical worship. We come now to a very special moment in this service of worship. This last seven or eight months have been a season of firsts for us. And so now we have our first online service baptism with Genesis today. And so this is a very special moment. Kim was just telling me that this is appropriate because Genesis has only attended online church, right? And so here we are to baptize him today. So brothers and sisters, we say that baptism is a gift from God. It declares to each of us the love and the grace of God. In this sacrament, we celebrate the life of Christ laid down for us, the Holy Spirit poured out on us, and the living water offered to us. God claims and cleanses us, rescues us from sin, and raises us to new life. He plants us into the church of Christ and sustains and strengthens us with the power of the Spirit. Although we do not deserve these gifts of grace or fully understand them, God offers them to all and through Christ invites us to respond. We recall the words of the risen Christ who said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded to you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. On the day of Pentecost, Peter preached the gospel of Christ's resurrection. Those who heard the message asked what they should do. Peter told them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Gracious God, we thank you for the, your gifts of water and the Holy Spirit, for your cleansing, sustaining, and life-giving power. From the beginning, your grace has been made known through water and the Spirit. Your Spirit moved over the waters at creation, and you led your people to freedom through the parted sea. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus. He was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and anointed with the Holy Spirit. He passed through the deep waters of death and lives on forevermore. He offers living water and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray, pour out your Holy Spirit so that the one baptized in this water may die to sin, be raised with Christ and be born to new life in the family of your church. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We've already affirmed our Christian belief, and so now, Charlie, Kim, I ask you both together, do you turn away from evil and all that denies God? If so, please say, I do. And do you turn to God, trusting in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and in the Holy Spirit as helper and guide? If so, please say, I do. And I ask you now to respond to God's love and grace to your child by making these promises. Will you love this, your child, committing yourselves to care for him in body, mind, and spirit? If so, please say, we will. And will you therefore ensure that he is nurtured in the faith and life of the Christian community? If so, please say, we will. And will you set before him a Christian example that through your prayers, your words, and your deeds, he may learn the ways of Christ? If so, please say, we will. And members of the body of Christ, I'm going to ask you a series of questions now, and I invite you at home, wherever you are, to answer in the affirmative by saying, we will. And as you speak it at home, I invite you also to type it into the community feed so that we can surround Genesis with this promise today that we make as a community of Christ. So members of the body of Christ, will you so maintain the church's life of worship and service so that this child may grow in grace and in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord? Will you proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ? 
Will you surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others? And will you pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life? If so, at home, please say, we will, and then type it into our community feed. What name have you given this child? Genesis. Genesis, for you, Jesus Christ came into this world. For you, he lived and showed God's love. For you, he suffered death on a cross. For you, he triumphed over death, rising to newness of life. And for you, he prays at God's right hand. And all of this for you, before you could know anything of it. And so, Genesis, in your baptism, the Scripture is fulfilled. We love because God first loved us. There you go. And so, Genesis, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And by baptism, Genesis, we welcome you into the life of the church. Amen. Amen. And wherever you are at home, would you welcome Genesis into the family of our church with your comments on our comment feed and with rapturous applause wherever you are, for this is a good news event today. We have a couple of things that we want to give to you all. In here, Charlie, you're going to find a prayer blanket. You're also going to find a Bible, a children's Bible, and we invite you to open it up and to read it to Genesis as often as you can so that he grows up hearing these stories um, of the God who loves him so very, very much. There you go. And you're also going to find in here Genesis's um, certificate of baptism that he can take wherever he goes to remember this moment, remember this day. Amen. What a joy in our church to have Genesis baptized this morning. We invite you also to stand and affirm your faith. We'll have a video from some of our confirmands. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Clay and to Stephen for those for leading our affirmation of faith today. Um, I wanted to tell you for this children's message, kids, you can come on close. Uh, we're just going to talk briefly for a minute. You've seen some amazing things just already this morning. With a baptism of an infant, with reading of the um, affirmation of faith by our confirmands, um, our church is saying that you are important, kids and grown-ups. But right now we're talking to the kids when you were little, when you are little, we bring you to church, you get baptized, you sit on the pews, you go to Sunday school, we hear your voices in the songs and in the readings, and you are growing and learning. And then when you reach about middle school age is when we think that it really happens, you begin to take this faith on for yourself. You begin to say, what is this and do I believe in this? Is this something that's important in my life? And that's what our confirmands did. Confirmation is a process that Pastor Drew and myself, we ran for many months at the beginning of this year. We took a little break, right, because of COVID. Everything's because of COVID. And then last week, we had eight teenagers stand up in front of their parents and our congregation and say yes to God, to say yes to this church. And you will all get that opportunity to do so as well. Church, what I want you to hear is our kids are important, that our teenagers are important, and we invest in them, and we need you to invest in them as well. You will hear more about this as the day goes on. 
but for right now, let us celebrate together that last week we confirmed eight young people here at our church. If you missed the service, you can see it on our Facebook Live, exactly where you might, many of you are watching right now. You can go and you can remember and be with us in that service whenever you would like to. Um, but we appreciate everything you do for the kids and children. You keep coming. We keep inviting you to come, and you are showing up, and we are thankful. You are amazing, and God created each and every one of you to learn and to grow and to teach others about God and God's love. Let us pray. Most holy God, we are so thankful for this church that invests in its young people, that invests in its old people, that invests in each of us together. God, we are thankful for baby Genesis, who was baptized for his mother and his grandmother, who are there to care for him. We are thankful for the eight confirmands and for their families that have raised them in the faith. We are thankful for the step that they are taking in their faith journey. God, I ask that you empower us all to care for them to provide places for them to learn and to grow and to then to offer ourselves to support them in that growth. Lord, we are thankful. And in your name we pray. Amen. Pastor Drew. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Kerry. It is an exciting day as we celebrate our uh, baptism of baby Genesis and as we celebrate our confirmation class and as we celebrate the legacy of faith that we continue to inherit. And I remember the church that raised me, that helped pass down the faith uh, to me and to our family and all those who gave so generously to support that work and to support me in my own faith journey. And now we as the church have the opportunity to support the faith journeys of ourselves and continuing to support the faith journeys of baby Genesis and our confirmation students. And that's why we give to the church. It's because we want to invest in the work that God is doing, invest in people growing as deeply rooted disciples of Jesus. And so I want to thank each of you for your generosity to this church to continue our ministries in the midst of this pandemic season as we tr seek to do things in new and different ways. Uh, having your support, both financially as well as through your volunteer efforts, means so much and enables our work to continue and we do appreciate it. So I want to let you know there are several different ways that you can give to the work of our church. We do have our Give Plus app that you can download on your phone. And if you have that on your phone, I invite you to go ahead and just take it now and uh, give your donation for this week so that we can participate in that together. We also have our website, mumconline.com slash give, or you can also do as our family does and set it up through your bank so that it's automatically uh, deposited uh, and a check is cut to the church. Or if you have a checkbook, you're welcome to drop off your offering at the Parton Center each week or mail it in. Uh, we do appreciate all the ways in which you support the work of our church. Let's pray together. God, we give you thanks that you call us into this work to build on the legacy of those who come before and to continue to pass on the faith from generation to generation. God, use the gifts that we give to empower your work and to empower the ministries of our church as we seek to grow deeply rooted disciples of Jesus that bear fruit of your work in this world. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below.
praise God indeed. And as we come now to our time of prayer, I invite you to share with us any prayer concerns that you would like for us to lift up during this time. You can use the chat feature of our community feed and uh, put those there, and I will try to include them in my prayer a little bit later. There's a bit of a delay, so I'll put it in now and we'll try to get to it later. Or if you have a prayer concern that's more confidential that you would like just shared with our pastor, pastoral team or with our prayer team, you can also use our attendance pad uh, to share those concerns with us as well. Will you join me in prayer now? God of Saul and David, God of Peter and Paul, God of Donald and Joe, we come before you this morning in a season of being tossed about by winds of partisanship and division. We come to you in the aftermath of a very messy election year, where some of us are rejoicing in the results while others feel disappointed. But God, all of us feel bruised and hurt by the process. God, we confess that we feel the temptation to draw us to opposite poles one from the other. But God, we pray today that you would help us instead draw close to you, our ever-constant pole star. Help us as the church to be agents of reconciliation and love as our country seeks to heal and to come together to face the many challenges that are before us. God of healing, we pray that you would help our nation to be freed from the limiting definition of greatness that counts only economic growth and military power. But instead, God, free us to measure our success by the metrics of how well we care for the poor, how strongly we work for justice for the oppressed, and how much we model hospitality for the stranger. God, this weekend, as we remember the end of the hostilities of a world war, we pray for those who are also working for peace in areas of conflict and violence. We pray that you would give strength and courage, perseverance and protection for all of those who are currently overseas. And God, we also pray for our veterans today, especially those who are struggling with depression, with PTSD, and all of the often overlooked wounds of war. God, we pray that you would give to all of us the vision that you gave to Isaiah, where seeming enemies come together as friends, where wolves lie down with lambs and lions sit with oxen, and all of us live into your kingdom of peace through love. God, help us to imagine that world as we seek to lead our world into your future. God, we pray for those in our community today. We pray for those who are sick, those who are hurting. Particularly, we pray for Steve Silver as he seeks uh, healing today. We also pray for Sonia Yoder as she is recovering in surgery. And we pray also for friends in our congregation that we name before you now including Ruth and Cassie. Help us, O God, to be a grace-filled family whose roots are planted deep within your love and grace so that no matter what comes before us, we find ourselves secure in you and allow our roots to bear fruit, fruit that is worthy of our repentance, fruit that draws others into a closer relationship with you so that those from generation to generation after us will also have your praise on their lips and your love in their hearts. Knit us together in this way and in our prayer as we pray together the prayer your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading today comes from Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7, and I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. The next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God and keep his commandments. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much to Michelle for reading the scripture for us today. I also just want to add another very special prayer to, uh, to Drew's pastoral prayers there this morning. I want to pray for our brother in Christ, Dan Lowe, today, and, uh, and to lift his name up and to um, assure him of our prayers and to invite God to bring comfort and healing to, to Dan and to Kathy at this time. As Michelle read those words, as I read those words this week, getting prepared for our sermon today, there was really only one word that came to mind for me, legacy. Legacy. And as I read through and think of that word legacy, it has a number of different things that it brings to mind for me. But primarily, I came up with a couple of questions, one which I'm going to talk about now just for a moment, and then one which I'll come back to later on in our sermon. So that first question that I think of when I think of legacy is what kind of, what legacies were given to me? Who are the people that created legacy and left a legacy in my own life? Now, of course, I think immediately of my own parents. I give thanks for them. I give thanks that they left a legacy of love and of grace and of sacrifice, and that that continues to this very day. Many of you can say exactly the same thing whenever you think of your parents, of course. I think to the church that I grew up in, to the people who taught me the Christian faith. So I think of William and Roger, Sunday school teachers of mine, when I was around 12, 13, maybe 14 years of age, of how they showed up week in and week out and shared the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of God's unconditional love in a way which maybe didn't make sense at the time for me, but certainly were the building bricks of the faith that I have in my life to this very day. They left me a legacy of faith. I think of my old rugby coach, who I met probably when I was about 15 years of age and played in his team for three or four years after that. He gave us a, uh, he showed us what it was to be committed, what it was to train hard, to work hard, to make sure that you left everything on the field, what it was to work together in a team, be committed to one another in a way that would make you the best team in your country at your age level. And he did that. It was a good time. He left a legacy of commitment. I think also of those who have left a legacy of generosity. You know, Margaret and I first moved to the United States in 2003. We had been married for about 18 months at that stage, and we really had no business making an international move to a place where I would be the only breadwinner on a youth director's salary. Anybody who knows a youth director's salary knows that that's not a lot. We would not have survived at that time were it not for our friend John and for his legacy of generosity. He supported us and helped us all the way through those three years in a way that gave us such a good experience of this place that we came back here seven years after we left in 2006, and I'm here with you all today. A legacy of generosity. 
I think of the people that I have ministered alongside. My first superintendent minister, Margaret. Or I think of Renee, who was a senior pastor of that church in Port St. Lucie. I think of my friend Heather, who was my tutor in seminary and who went on to become the first female president of the Methodist Church in Ireland. All of them leaving a legacy of leadership in my own life. I think of our bishop of the Florida Conference, Ken Carter, leading in the most difficult of times and leaving a legacy of leadership not only in my life but in the life of of our entire conference. And then, of course, I've told you about growing up in a nation that was divided and at conflict in Northern Ireland, and how for the last 20 plus years it has been a nation in recovery. So, I think of the people who left a legacy of reconciliation. I think of Father Jerry Reynolds. I think of the Reverend Harold Good. I think of my dear friend, Glenn Jordan, and of the gifts that they gave to people, a gift which helped us envisage a future which was brighter and better than the previous decades that we had endured. They left our legacy of reconciliation. As I think about that word legacy, as I look back on the stories of my lifetime, I can see so many people who have given me legacies in my life. As you listen to those stories, hearing names of people that you maybe haven't heard of before, maybe in your mind you are stretching back to the stories of your life, thinking of the people who have left a legacy for you of some description. You see, legacy, what we pass on, is so remarkably important. Last week, we worshiped on All Saints Day, and we remembered all of the saints who have passed on the story of the good news of God's grace down through generations in a way that meant that we have received it in our own lives. We celebrate the legacy of faith that those people, those saints have given to us. And we celebrate that, church, because we are a people of legacy, We are a people who, since the very start of our faith story, all of those thousands of years ago, have been charged with a ministry of legacy, who have been tasked with passing on the story of our faith, a story which has given us as individuals and as churches, given us life, given us grace, given us meaning and purpose, given us call. Legacy is a significant aspect of who we are and of what we leave behind us, what we pass on. It really, really matters. And I think that that's what's at the very heart of those verses that Michelle read for us from Psalm 78. In that psalm, the psalmist is putting into song or writing a poem of the story of legacy that defines the people of Israel, the people of the ancient faith in which our Christian faith is so deeply rooted. Give ear to my teaching, says the psalmist as he opens up this song. You see, the psalmist has things that need to be said, things that need to be heard, In many ways, a psalmist is like a teacher who's going into the classroom every day saying to their children, give ear to my teaching. He's like the preacher on a Sunday morning saying to a camera in this case, hey guys, give ear to my teaching. It's something that needs to be said, something that needs to be heard. But the psalmist also recognizes that there is a little bit of a problem with that because the psalmist is going to tell those stories of old, those ancient parables that have been passed on. They are old. They are familiar. I don't know if it's ever been your experience in church whenever you hear the Scripture read on a Sunday morning and you think to yourself, oh, dear Lord, I've heard this a hundred times before. I'm going to hear it again in the next few minutes. Maybe you will type in the comments feed if you've had that experience before. And I will say to you, at 8 o'clock this morning, they were very honest. I asked whenever that had been their experience. They all put up their hands to say that they'd had a moment of that. Pastor Carrie's doing it right now in the sanctuary here. But that doesn't mean that the psalmist is going to stop telling the stories. 
just because they're old, just because they're familiar, just because the temptation for these people is to switch off and to rest complacently in a place of familiarity. No, the psalmist isn't going to stop telling these stories of old or stop saying these same things, because even though these stories are old, even though they are so very familiar, this is a people who are defined by legacy, whose very story has been passed on to them as an act of legacy. Passing on a story matters, and therefore retelling it again and again matters. We will not hide this from our children, says the psalmist. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and His might and the wonders that He has done. As I read those words this week, I started to think to myself, well, Charlie, what are the glories of the Lord that you can testify to? Those glories of God that you have seen in your life, what are the wonders of the Lord in your life? What is the story of legacy that you are passing on? Then I thought to myself that I ought to ask you all that. Where have you seen the glories of God in your life? How have they become the testimony that you tell to those who will listen as you pass on legacy? What are the wonders of God in your own life? Because, my friends, those are what form our testimonies. Those are what form and shape the legacy that we pass on, the legacy of a God who is real and who is present and who is with us and who continues to call us into a life-filled and vibrant future together. The psalmist knows that this is the work of the people of God, to be people of legacy. The psalmist knows it and knows that it has been a commanded work of the people of God. As he describes a God who has established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children that the next generation might know him that the next generation might know Him. This, my friends, is the work of the local church, to tell the story, to teach it well, and to pass it on so that the next generation might know. What a wonderful example we've had earlier on in our service today as we have baptized little Genesis whose mother, Charlie, had also grown up and been nurtured in the faith in this church. How wonderful it is to pass on to that next generation the story of the good news of God's unconditional and life-transforming love. Our job is to pass on this story to our children, not just to them, but to our children's children and to every generation thereafter, so that they should set their hope in God, so that they should set their hope in God. Those two little words at the start of that phrase are so important. I don't know if you have heard of the author and leadership guru by the name of Simon Sinek. He has a number of books going around at the minute, and if you're into reading about leadership, I'm sure that you've come across him, but his most famous in recent years is a book called Start With Why. And his position is that if an organization or a group of people do not have a why in place, that is their reason for being, the reason behind everything that they do, the reason for their existence, if they do not have that why in place, then it's only going to be a matter of time before they begin to find themselves wallowing in mediocrity and decline. You've got to start with your why in place. We have got to have a why if we are to keep moving forward, the church of Jesus Christ. And the psalmist gives us that why when he says those two little words, so that… He's saying to the people of Israel, he's saying to the church of the 21st century through these words, hey church, tell the story. Don't stop telling the story and do it so that the children should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep God's commandments. Church, our why is our kids. 
and their kids that come after them, and all of those who become a part of the legacy of this church, of this local church. Our legacy must belong to them. Our work is the work of passing on the story of God's great news of love and grace. So, if you've heard all of this before, if it is overly familiar with you, or if it's just strange hearing it in the midst of these strange circumstances that we are in, be reminded, church, that our why still exists, that our ministry of legacy remains, and it remains central to who we are. If you've forgotten it, then receive this reminder. Our story is not only for us who are gathered virtually in this moment right here, right now. Our story is not only for us in this moment. It is for our children, and it is for the children who come after that so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. Our story is not just for us. We cannot just selfishly keep it to ourselves and experience it in this moment. It is for the generations that will come behind us. That was the vision of the founders of Memorial Church 200 years ago, and it's got to be our vision now as we envisage our next 200 years. We have a legacy to create and to sustain, one that will matter for generations to come after this one. And so that brings me to the second of those two questions that I asked when I was thinking of the word legacy. What kind of legacy will I leave? What kind of legacy will we leave, Memorial? Will we leave the legacy of a fractured and divided church? Will we leave the legacy of a church that has become shallow in its commitment to being disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? Will we leave behind the legacy of a church that has become distracted by the things of the world around us? Will we leave behind a legacy of a church that has forgotten its call? Or will we leave something a little stronger, a little more hope-filled, something that will last long into the future? Will we leave a legacy of great and vibrant faith? Will we leave a legacy of commitment to Christ, to one another, to the world around us, to the gospel, to the mission and ministry of the church as we've been called to it in this time? Will we leave behind a legacy of leadership, just blazing a trail for the way of God's goodness and mercy and love and grace in this world? Will we leave behind a legacy of leadership? Will we leave behind a legacy of generosity? You see, that's our call. Our call is to be a church that creates and leaves a legacy for the generations that will come after us, for our own children, for the children of families that are moving to this community day and daily, for all of us, we have got to create a legacy that keeps the mission and witness and ministry of God going through the life of this church together. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to think about how you might join in on that legacy as we preached a sermon on stewardship this sermon is going around that corner now. I'll preach about it again next week. I sent you out a letter a couple of weeks ago. I hope you received it, and in that, you will have received a commitment card. And if you did not get one of those and you'd like one, just comment in that live feed right now, and we'll make sure you get one. Or let us know at the office this week, and we'll mail one to you. But this is a way that we can all become a part of the legacy of Memorial United Methodist Church of what it becomes, of who it ministers to, of the lives that the mission and ministry of God transform through this place, not just in the next 12 months, but in the years ahead. We can join in on creating that legacy now by praying and asking God 
Lord, how can I join in with what you are doing right here and right now? And so that's our action in response to these words. In response to the call to be a church of legacy, our action is to shape that legacy. And so enter into a time of prayer together today and the days ahead. If you're a part of a couple, pray together as to how you might give. If you're part of a family, pray together as, about, as to how you might join in on the legacy of this place so that we not only survive these strange months ahead of us, but we thrive in them and press forward in the gospel and share the love of God widely and extravagantly as we build a legacy for this place that will last for generations to come. Pray about it, listen, and then have great faith and great courage as you fill out those little cards and return them. We've got great work to be involved with together, and it takes us all to play our part, and so I invite you into that ministry of legacy in this way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you please pray with me? And gracious God, we do give thanks that you invite us to join in with your work in our world. You invite us to give our time, our skills, our hearts, and our minds. But you do also invite us to support your work through this place financially. And in the midst of a very strange season, Lord, that seems so difficult just to work out how exactly we can do that. And so our prayer is very simple, that you would lead us, Lord God, with clarity and that we would respond with great faith and courage in all that you are doing as we join in to build the legacy of this place and of all that you are doing in and through it. All of this we ask in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Joey and Jeannie are going to lead us in a moment of musical reflection now. I give you peace My peace I leave you Go in peace To love and serve the Lord I give you peace My peace I leave you Go to love and serve the Lord. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, child. Peace My friends, I do thank you for joining us for online worship today. I want to invite you to take the opportunity this week to reach out to a friend, a connection from here at church, to remind them that they're loved, that they are not forgotten. As I do that, I want to let you know that one of our congregation members got in touch with me today, uh, this week, to let me know that she was sending out her 100th encouragement card of COVID. That is a staggering ministry. These encouragements matter, not only to those who receive them, but also those who are giving them. So reach out to one another, please. 
We also encourage you to take an opportunity to get connected with one of our classes or one of our small group opportunities. You can find out about those by going onto our website and reading those details there. We have many opportunities for you to connect with other people in small groups through the week. And you can also find links for everything in the Monday Connect that you will receive tomorrow. And then I invite you also to join us for worship next Sunday morning. You can gather in person uh, for backyard worship at 8 a.m. or for in-person indoor worship in Maxwell Hall at 9.15. Or, of course, we will be back here on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. next week. Wherever we get to see you in worship next week, we will be glad to join with you. We look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, please receive this benediction. Go in peace dear friends, to love and to serve the Lord. Go in peace, dear friends, to build the legacy of this, your local church, to share it widely with generations to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. 